What is up, everybody? Welcome to the second part of this three-part Premier League season preview series here on Touchline Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content, including the other parts of this series going up on the channel. Today is bold predictions. So I've got five of them, things that I wouldn't necessarily bet on happening, but I would not be surprised at all if they did or these are kind of my more out there predictions for the season, if you will. That's kind of how I'm defining this. First one. I think I did something similar last year. It worked pretty well. So we're going to stick with it and raise the, the ante a little bit here. Everton, top 10 finish. Now the caveat with this is that there can't be another points deduction. That this is based off of the points that Everton actually earn on the field. Here's why. One, I talk about this all the time. I don't understand why people question Sean Dyche. Look at what they did last season. Look at what he has navigated. Okay. Transfer window has been fine. It's not like the team has fallen apart and they need to rebuild it or anything like that. And then you look at the teams that are ahead of them that they would need to catch in order to get to the top 10. Bournemouth, Wolves, Fulham have arguably all lost their best player. And this is an Everton team last season that won more games than Brighton and as many games as Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace's season was obviously multi-parts, you know, pre-Oliver Glasner and with Oliver Glasner. So there's a little bit of an asterisk with that. But that's how good this team was. They weren't all that far off from being a top 10 team last season when nobody was inspired by them. And I look at the other teams that are in that category of kind of the, the mid-table ones that you don't necessarily think are going to be pushing toward the top eight and aren't also going to be in the relegation fight. And I'm just not that scared if I'm Everton. So this is partially my belief in Sean Dice. This is partially me looking at the teams I expect them to be competing with. Again, I think it's more likely they finish 11th or 12th, but I would not be surprised if they finish top 10. So that is bold prediction number one. Bold prediction number two is that this Dominic Solanke move to Spurs does not work. And specifically, the prediction is that he is going to score fewer than 10 Premier League goals this season. Dominic Solanke had 10 Premier League goals in his career before last season. And Dominic Solanke is going to turn 27 pretty soon. And I bring that up to illustrate and reinforce the idea that this is not a a young player who is figuring out it, figuring this out at 2030. He had a remarkable season at Bournemouth. I am willing to bet that his manager had a lot to do with that and that the circumstances were just right for that to work for him because he's been here before with multiple clubs, including Bournemouth, and never produced. And now you are asking him to be Harry Kane's replacement. He has one productive season in the Premier League on his record. If I'm wrong about this, I will own it. And that'll be that. I just don't see this. I'm just skeptical. I guess I'll put it that way. Because he's leaving an awfully good manager who I think has, has a lot to do with the success he had last season. Number three. Chelsea and or Manchester United finish outside the top six. Couple parts to this for me. One, I simply don't believe in either of these teams and the visions and the directions of these clubs until something actually changes. Don't care how many signings, how impressive the, the transfer window might look. There just seems to be no plan. 
no coherent strategy. And I feel like every season, at least some of us collectively who follow this sport and follow this league, fall into the trap of buying into one of these two teams. And I've, I've been pretty consistent with this over the last year or so that I'm just not doing it anymore. I've fallen for it in the past. It's not happening again. I will stick here until I am proven wrong. Now, the second part of this is what would it actually take for one of these teams to finish outside the top six? I believe there are three teams that are clearly better than both of them in City, Liverpool, and Arsenal. Not necessarily in that order, just how it came out. Then you're looking at the, the other teams that they're going to be competing with for spots four, five, and six. You're not ruling out Aston Villa. Could I see Aston Villa taking a step backward because of the Champions League? Yes, absolutely. That's not the one that I would be particularly confident in. I feel pretty good about Spurs. And then really, really good about Newcastle. Just because they don't have those extra responsibilities, they can focus on the Premier League. So let's just say Aston Villa fall off. You still need both Chelsea and Manchester United to beat out Newcastle and Aston Villa. Or sorry, Newcastle and Spurs. In order for both of them to finish top six, right? Because you've got three spots already. So then you can have one team. We'll just say they finish fourth, Newcastle or Spurs or Villa. And then five and six would have to be Chelsea and United for this prediction to be wrong. I just don't see that happening. I think one of them makes top six. I, I'm not convinced it's going to be both of them. So that's my way of kind of cushioning this in, but I just don't see a lot of meaningful progress for either of these clubs. I guess I'll put it that way. Prediction number four. I hinted at this in my tiers preview. Specifically that Cody Gagpo is going to have 20 plus goal involvements in the Premier League this season. I don't have any kind of specifics as to why I feel this way. I just kind of do. And, and I specifically started thinking about this during the Euros. And yes, it's different international versus club. But it's not like he has been unproductive for Liverpool. And... Now he's got a manager from his native country. There's an opportunity to kind of re, reshape and change the, the approach in terms of the roles at Liverpool. And you just watch him with the Dutch national, men's national team and you just... I feel like there is so much more untapped potential here. And you look at what he did in the era of EC. I mean, the numbers he put up before Liverpool made that transfer heading into the World Cup were ridiculous. 20 isn't all that crazy for goal involvements. It's 12 goals, 8 assists, something like that. There are so many attacking players that maybe he doesn't quite get the, the amount of playing time he needs. But I just feel like this is going to be his breakout season. It's a, it's a gut instinct kind of thing. I could be way off on this, but that is my my general prediction that Cody Gakpo has a really, really good season for Liverpool and specifically that he is involved in at least 20 goals in the Premier League. Finally, this is the, in a literal sense, the boldest of them because it will not happen. Eddie Howe wins manager of the season. And I say it will not happen because you have to do something extraordinary to win this thing without winning the league. Because Unai Emery should have had it last season. And he didn't. So basically my prediction here is that Eddie Howe is going to do a good enough job to have my vote for manager of the season and have a Unai Emery-like season. Where there are people talking about he's doing the best managerial job in the league, whether he actually wins this award or not. And again, a lot of this has to go to the not having Champions League, the fact that I still really, really like the squad, even though it's not as loaded as, as maybe people thought when the takeover happened, 
my belief in Eddie Howe as a manager, my belief that they're going to bounce back, and the questions I have about the other teams that they're competing with. Aston Villa benefited from this. Now, I know they were still in European competition, but they benefited from the toll the Champions League took on Newcastle last season. Now, Aston Villa have to go pay that price in the Champions League. I talked about Man- Manchester United and Chelsea. There is a, there is a clear pathway for me for this team to finish fourth or fifth. And to me, if that happens, we're going to be back to talk about how good of a job Eddie Howe is doing. There were some circumstances outside of his control last season in more ways than one. The injuries, the Tanawi situation, the Champions League and the extra games that hopefully, from a Newcastle standpoint, are not as big factors this season. And I, these are my two guys, John Dyche and Eddie Howe. I've been right about Dyche. I think I've generally been right about Howe. And there were these talks last season about, you know, is it time to go on from him? Is he taking him as far as he can? I just don't buy that. Now, whether he's taking him as far as he can, different conversation, my argument would just be he's taking them as far as anybody can because they don't have one of the top three squads in the Premier League. To me, this is the season where we're really going to find out if this is a sustainable long-term thing for Eddie Howe or if Newcastle need to make a change to get where they want to be. Which one was a more accurate reflection of where this club is at? Two seasons ago or last season? I am willing to bet on Eddie Howe to bet that it was two seasons ago that there just is a a significant price you pay when you are not a deep squad having to go into the Champions League like that. I I expect the bounce back and for us to be talking and, and singing the praises of Eddie Howe once again. Those are my five bold predictions for the Premier League this season. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.